This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Oh. Are you going to choose? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. Training session number, who knows, 1,200 something, I don't know, 13, something like that. God is good all the, all the time. Turn to Psalm 15 for a moment. Psalm 15. Is everybody there? Psalm 15. Verse 1. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? And who may dwell in your holy hill? That means who may live in your presence. He tells us it's very important. See, God's presence is something special. The tabernacle is associated with the three chambers. Outer court, holy place, most holy place. He is the tabernacle. It's dwelling in the secret place of the most high. It is called the reality zone. Everyone say reality zone. Reality. That means it's a place where things are made real. There's no fake news in reality zone. In verse 2, and he explains, he says, He who what? Walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. Hello? Where? In his own heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. Verse 4. In whose eyes a vow person is despised, but he honors those who what? Fear the Lord. That's reverence, honor, and respect. And in the presence of God, there must be a reverence to the Lord. That's why we worship him. It says, he who swears to his own hurt and does not what? change he doesn't change he doesn't care he doesn't let anything move him doesn't allow his emotions his feelings or circumstances he is constant no matter what he who does not put out his money at usury nor does he take a bribe against the innocent he who does these things shall never be what won't be moved he won't be what moved, moved. in other words he won't be moved out of position in that position i'm telling you right now it's called the reality zone and too many people get bumped out and thrown out. The enemy comes in and poof. Gives them a hip, hip, hip hop, boom. Hits them in the hip and moves them right out of place. And you know what you, happens from, if you get hit out of the reality zone, you're in the dead zone. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Corinthians chapter 4. In verse 7. But we have this what? Treasure, Treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of, not of us. May be of God and not of us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal body. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak or sing or praise, knowing that he who raised the, up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. 
Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are unseen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. This is reality zone, that this is what you're looking at. You are recognizing your influence constantly. There's something important. You must fight to get into reality zone, and then you must fight to stay in it. Has everybody got it? You fight to get there, and then you fight to stay there. That reality zone is a total different place than what the world knows and understands. It has nothing to do with carnal senses, wisdom, or understanding. It has everything to do with eternal and kingdom business. Everybody get it? Earthen vessels, in other words, the power of God manifesting the life of Jesus in our mortal body. So we don't lose heart by, through trials or tribulations or afflictions, knowing that these things are going to all work to the good, no matter what. So again, we're not looking at what is seen. We're looking at what is unseen, because in the reality zone, you see through the seen into the unseen. That's why the word says, come out from among them and touch nothing unclean. See, you won't touch those things because you'll know, you sense what's clean, unclean, what's holy, unholy, what's pleasing to him and displeasing to him. In the reality zone, you are covered. It is called the secret place of the most high. It is the greatest high. That's why he's called most high. Amen. Ephesians 2. It has nothing to do with the soul issue arena. But I'll tell you, the enemy will try and use your soul, your emotions, your thoughts, all of this stuff to bounce you out of the reality series and bring you back into captivity again. You got to remember, you're, he's afraid of you when you're in that realm. When you're in that zone, you see him, you see his works. You know he's coming before he gets there. This is where the Spirit is telling you things to come and guiding you to all truth. You know exactly what's going on in a reality zone because it is real to you. It is so real. The unseen is so real. The voices are so real. You can almost pinpoint every single voice and know its fruits and what's influencing it. What spirits are associated with them? But you must be filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2. In verse 1, is everybody there? He says, In you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you what? Once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Why? Because that is the Antichrist spirit. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, for by his plan or grace you've been saved. And he raised us up together and did what? He made us Sit together where? In heavenly places where? In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. You are placed in heavenly places. That's called reality zone. Ooh, yes. That what? In the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you've been saved... Through faith and not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Remember, grace is God's plan. It's not some uh, unmerited favor. It's called unmerited love. Because the only way you maintain salvation is to cooperate with the plan of salvation. Amen. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his what? We are what? 
His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Wow. Knowing this and understanding this is called the reality zone. Galatians 5. The reality zone is a place of detail. It's a place of what? Detail. You are sensitive. You see it. You know it. It is detailed. You don't miss nothing. Galatians chapter 5. Verse 16. Galatians 5, 16. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the fl flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. In other words, you know. So being filled in the spirit being filled with the Spirit is constantly being filled with the Spirit. All day, no matter what's going on, you sense dryness, Lord, fill me. Start praying in tongues, start praising God. Don't let the enemy dry you up because you start getting dry, you get kicked out of the reality zone, into the dead zone. So he's telling us, walk in the Spirit, stay filled in the Spirit. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. This is reality zone. You're detailed. You see. You know what's what. You sense things. Now he tells us about the dead zone. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. This is called the dead zone. Remember, the enemy's always trying to get you out of reality zone into dead zone. Amen? Glory. In Ephesians 3, Too many people are so swayed and get kicked out of the reality zone. When you are kicked out of the reality zone, you are blinded. You can't see past yourself. Everything's about you. Me, 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 me. Your eyes are not even on Jesus at all. The Lord is no longer before you. You're before him. So you can't be led. That's what David said, right? He said, I always see the Lord before me. Let me tell you, in your relationship with the king, if he's before you all the time, that's relationship. Because you're talking to him all the time. There's reality. See, Jesus becomes so real to you. The Holy Spirit becomes so real to you. Conviction becomes so real to you. It's a reality of the other realm of eternity of the presence of God. It is a reality that no one can take or steal unless you allow it. Amen. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3, verse uh, 14. Let's speak it. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be what? Strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to what? Comprehend. Let me tell you, in the reality realm, you are able to comprehend and understand. Two things are important. You see and understand. Always. The reality realm always brings you to seeing and understanding. That's called comprehend. With all the saints, what is the width and the length and the depth and height, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with what? The fullness of God. That you may be filled with the fullness of God. Again, there are two things that always happen in the reality realm. You are able to see 
and you are able to understand. To understand means you are able to interpret. You're interpreting what the Spirit is saying, and you're rejecting the voice of the stranger. You are not accepting that voice. You reject it. Other than that, you're in the dead zone. You're either in the reality zone or you're in a dead zone. And you're dangerous. Because when you're in a dead zone, the enemy can use you quickly. And he comes quickly. You're not only about to blow it, but the enemy's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. And he'll take out anyone. He'll use that person to take out others also. That's why it's called the dead zone. Philippians 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Philippians 3.17. Let's speak it, please. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame who set their mind on earthly things, emotional things. For our citizenship is where? In heavenly. Man, in, let me tell you, in the reality zone, you're always heavenly bound. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will what? Transform our lonely body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. In other words, our citizenship, it is such a reality. We know that this place is temporary and we know we don't belong here. We know we don't belong here. Our focus and purpose is to fulfill our mission. That's reality zone. Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He has blessed with every spiritual blessing. Let me tell you, those blessings are released in a reality zone because you're in perfect position. The reality zone is the regeneration zone. Ah, come on, let this hit. That we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Everyone say in Christ. in Christ. So in Christ, when you are walking in Christ, you are actually walking in the reality zone because he is so real to you. There is a oneness. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be what? Holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us to the adoption as sons and daughters by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. We are blessed at every spiritual blessing. Why? Because we are able to see and understand, interpret. The spiritual realm, the kingdom of God, we see, we understand the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. We understand both voices. We understand both influences. There is a seeing and an understanding that is constant. Constant. Titus 3. Titus 3. In the reality zone, you know you must make contact every day. Without making contact, you will easily slip from reality zone to dead zone. And you make contact through prayer and praise. One of the things about the reality zone, when you're in that reality zone, you are maintaining your identity. 
identity is real to you, who you are. In Titus 3 and verse 1, let's read it. Remember them to be what? Subject to rulers and authorities to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. Powerful. There is a regeneration and a renewing of his spirit. It is a place of regeneration. It is a continuous regeneration in the reality zone. If you are kicked out of the reality zone into the dead zone, that regeneration is put on hold. It's put on what? Hold. Because you can't regenerate in the dead zone. You're no longer on the process of life. You're on the process of death. Everything associated with life ceases until you get out of that zone. That's why it's called the dead zone. You must get back. You repent, you get back, and you don't allow yourself to be misled by how you feel. Let me tell you something. Cold and lukewarm is dead zone. It is not reality zone. It is the dead zone. One of the things is, that's why Jesus gave us the formula. He said, deny yourself. Pick up the cross, which is the sword, and fight. Amen? Because you can't deny yourself and fight with, to follow. All of these things are a process. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, the sword, amen, and fight, which allows you to follow. <clears throat> let, let me share with you, in the reality zone, there is a constant. Because you're following Jesus, as you're following Jesus, in the reality zone, there is a constant regeneration. It's continuous. In Psalm 39. Psalm 39. In the reality zone... You not only believe, accept, but execute the promises of God. You decree these things. They are real to you. It's not a fake. It's not a hope. It's not a false hope. It is a reality. The promises of God are real to you. In the, rea in the reality zone, you discern what is clean and unclean, what's holy and unholy. You discern these things. You know it. You know the things that please God. You know the things that displease God. You don't ignore them. Why? Because if you ignore them, you get kicked out of the reality zone and into the dead zone. Remember, there's a constant battle for that. In Psalm 39, is everybody there? In verse 1, let's speak it. I said, I will guard my ways lest I sin with my tongue. I will restrain my mouth with a muzzle while the wicked are before me. I was mute with silence. I held my peace even from good, and my sour was stirred up. My heart was hot within me while I was musing the fire burn. Then I spoke with my tongue. Lord, make me to know my end. This man's in the reality zone. Does everybody get it? Why? He's asking the Lord, expose me. Why? He's saying, look at man, I know my tongue. I, I'm, I'm a man, tie this tongue in a bow tie. At least make it look good. 
I know my tongue can push, fly me right out of reality zone in the dead zone. Lord, make me to know my end and what is the measure of my days that I may know how frail I am. Verse 5. Indeed, you have made my days as a hand breast, and my age is nothing before you. Certainly every man at his best state is but vapor. Surely every man walks about like a shadow. Surely they busy themselves in vain. He heaps up riches and does not know who will gather them. And now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the reproach of the foolish. I was mute. I did not open my mouth because it was you who did it. Remove your plague from me. I am consumed by the blow of your hand. When, when with rebukes you correct man for iniquity, you make his beauty melt away like a moth. Surely every man is what? Vapor. But what does he say? Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. And do not be silent at my tears, for I am a stranger with you, a sojourner, as all my fathers were. Remove your gaze from me that I may regain strength before I go away and am no more. Wow. Now, there's a part where he might have touched the dead zone. He said, man, get me back. Get me back. I don't like the dead zone. I want the reality zone. Amen? And you know what? There's a time you've got to be willing to do whatever it takes. You're going to have to eat some humble pie. Just put a bunch of whipped cream on it. And cut big pieces. Matthew 10. So you might not know you're in a dead zone, but others might. Matthew 10, 32. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Amen. Remember, the reality zone is a place of regeneration so we can see and understand constantly. Man, you know when you're out of that zone. You know when you're close to the edge. You know when you're beginning to touch the dead zone. Every alarm goes off. The problem is if you, if you constantly touch it, you will become deaf of the alarm and you'll become blind to the enemy. I'm going to say that again. You'll become deaf of the alarm, and you'll become blind to the enemy because you've become short-sighted. Verse 32, would you speak it? Therefore, whoever what? Confesses me before men. Him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Now, let me share this with you. People think, you mean I got to talk about Jesus all the time? No, it's denying his character, denying his conduct. When you deny Christ, you're denying his image, his character. Somebody got it. That's denying him. Why? Because you and I should be walking in the character of Christ. We should be ready in season and out. Do not think that I've come to bring what? Peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a what? A sword. You know, in the reality zone, man, there's a sword in each hand. <laughs> You're ready to fight no matter what. You know that that fight, again, you must fight to get in. You must fight to maintain. The sword of the spirit is a reality to, to you. Demons, devils, demonic forces, Voices of the stranger. All of this evil influence. You know the who told you that is a reality. And where did you come from? Verse 35. For I've come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son and daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross, hit sword, and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Wow. That is powerful. 
Again, it goes to that place to deny yourself, fight, and follow. So as you're constantly following, that regeneration is constant. Constant. And only, t let me share with you, rebellion is touching the dead zone. Amen? It's touching the dead zone. In 1 Peter chapter 5. The reality zone, again, is a place of detail. You see things through. You know that decision, what the end result is. In fact, you don't, go, you don't get sucked into places. There's no anxiousness or fear in the reality zone, none. There's perfect love. It casts out all fear, doesn't it? 1 Peter chapter 5. In verse 8, it says, be what? Be what? Sober, which means alert. Be vigilant, which means consistent. This is reality zone. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. You know this. So you're alert and you're consistent. It says, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have been trained up by what? Your trials and tribulations, suffering a while, you will be perfected. You'll be established. You'll be strengthened and you'll be settled so you don't move. You don't move from where? The reality zone. Amen? Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 3. Everybody there? Amen. Glory. Let's speak it. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves. I want you to know what this is called. Selfies. We have, we are, look at, we are not of that generation, but we are, there is a generation of selfies. It is a generation that is totally deceived, that is totally overrun by demonic forces, and they have no idea because everything is about themselves. Tick, tick. Flesh book, Facebook, selfie, 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 selfie. It's all about self. This is dead zone. It is a generation of selfies. It is a dead zone. And children and people have been caught up in the selfie generation in the dead zone, not fulfilling the mission of God. Many of them are getting killed and wiped out. It's the prayers of the saints that are still holding some of them still in place. But there's a point of accountability where a person must make a decision to come out of selfie and to get into him. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedience to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good. They are traitors. They are headstrong, haughty. They are lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God because they're selfies. They have a form of godliness but denying its power from such people what? Turn away. Why? Because they'll draw you right into the dead zone. They are dead zone living individuals. They're on their way to hell and they have no idea. They think everything is just cool because everybody else does it. But they are touching everything of death and they have no idea. It's the dead zone. It is not the reality zone. Why? Because they don't hear the alarms. Amen? They do not hear the alarms and they cannot see the enemy. Selfie generation. It is used by Satan's kingdom. But see, in the reality zone, you know it, you see it, and you understand it. And you don't get caught up in it. Is everybody okay? Amen. James 4. The word tells us about this generation.
James chapter 4. Glory. Glory. Y'all want the truth, right? I want the truth. James 4, verse 1. What does it say? Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covenant cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you don't ask. And you ask and do not receive because you ask and miss that you may spend it on your pleasures or your desires. In the reality zone, you understand what is your desires. You know whether your desires, your motives, your attitude is pleasing or displeasing to God. You are sensitive to because in the reality zone, it is a constant self-examination. It doesn't stop. Because where there's a constant self-examination, there's a constant regeneration. He says, adulterers and adulteresses do not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Why? Because the world is dead zone. Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Anybody here want to be an enemy of God? Well, become a selfie. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. Therefore, God says he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hearts, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Cleanse your hands. Purify your hearts. Why? Because then you become double-minded. You touch. One day you're good, one day you're not. You allow, these are individuals that are actually living in a soulish arena, allowing the emotions of everything to make their decisions. They, in the dead zone, you are not kingdom-minded. The double-minded is kingdom-minded and selfish-minded. It's both. But the dead zone is not kingdom-minded. And then you can go deeper and deeper into the dead zone. The further you get away from the reality zone, the deeper you go into demonic hold and bondage. Proverbs 3. In the reality zone, you discern your desires. You know those desires are either pleasing or displeasing to God. Proverbs 3. everybody there in verse 1 please Proverbs 3 verse 1 my son do not forget my law but let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you let not mercy and truth forsake you bind them around your neck write them on the tablet of your heart and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all of your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and what? Depart from evil. Let me tell you, you depart from evil quickly, or you overtake it in the reality realm. In that zone, in the reality zone, things are so real to you, you know you cast your cares on the Lord. You discern. He lets you know because you hear his voice. You know what battles you're to fight and what battles you're to turn to him. You know what battles are yours and what are not. We acknowledge them. We don't trust in our own heart. We don't lean on our own understanding. Our understanding in the reality zone is different than our understanding. Now, when there's things you don't understand, you trust. And it's so quick. You don't try to calculate. There's no calculations in the reality zone. It either is or you trust. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't be wise in your own eyes. 
Man, you know when to depart from evil. I mean, there's just certain things because the enemy tries to draw you in and bring arguments. Forget it. Just depart. Call destructive fire now and walk away. <laughs> Make sure it's not on your kids or your wife or your spouse. No. You just forgive, bless, and walk away and let God take care of them. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, <laughs> Praise God. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be what? Health, Health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions. And with the first fruits of your increase. Let me share something with you. In the reality zone, money doesn't control you. In fact, you're a giver. You know that the more you give, the more he gives. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of your increase so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Are you ready for this one? My children, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction, because correction brings direction, when direction brings protection. Amen? Do, nor detest his correction, for whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. That's reality zone. And I'm going to close. What a reality. <laughs> Romans 2. <laughs> Romans 2. It's just for you. Glory. There are too many people not in a reality zone. It isn't real to them. Demonic influence is not real. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not real. Walking in the Spirit is not real. Influence is not real enough. Self-examination. All of these things. They're fighting for their life so much that they push them right out of the reality zone. Self. Selfies, selfish ambitions. All, all about self. Remember, it brings blindness. Amen? So you no longer can hear the warnings and you can't see. Romans 12, verse 1. That's when you get blindsided by the enemy. Romans 2. <laughs> verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Therefore, come on, let's say it. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O oh man, whoever you are, who judge. For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge, you practice the same things. I can't tell you, that's dead zone. <laughs> Romans 2, right? Okay, good. Verse 2. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. Let me share with you something. In the reality zone, truth, justice, and purity is so important to you. It is everything to you. That truth, justice, and Impure and purity, being pure, is so essential to you because those are things that keep you in the reality zone. Truth, justice, and how you judge things, and maintaining that pure heart. Purity is what keeps you in the reality zone. Other than that, you get kicked out into the dead zone. Amen? But we know that judgment of God is according to the truth against those who practice such things. Verse 3. 
And do you think this, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? These are people that are in the dead zone. They're talking about everybody else, but yet they're practicing the same thing. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to what? Repentance. But in accordance with your hardness and your impudent heart, you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds eternal life to those who by Patient, continue in doing good, seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are what? Self-seeking. Selfies. And do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish, and every soul of a man who does evil, of the Jew first and also the Greek. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. Reality zone. Plain and simple. You're either in it or you're not. Amen? Because there's no gray areas. You're either in it or you're not. And remember, you fight to get in it, and you fight to maintain in it. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask for this revelation to be such impartation and become reality to each and every one of us. That anything that we may be touching, agreeing, or any area of our life that is trying to infiltrate and move us out of the reality zone, into the dead zone, expose it. Help us to keep a self-examining heart that we may be continuously in generation so that we may see and that we may understand in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory. <laughs>